What is up, Eastern Oregon? This is Dodgy with EO Live Sports, and today I'm joined by EOU head softball coach, Nicole Christian. Nicole, how are you? Good, Dodgy. How are you? I'm good. Uh, uh, what is this, year five? Yes. Already? It's crazy, yes. It seems like it was just yesterday that you took the job, and we were, you know, and the softball program has come a long ways in those five years. Yeah, we've definitely continued to improve. Um, I think that's been our goal since we got here is – making this program consistently um, tough to play. Um, we want to be ranked nationally every year. Um, yeah. We want to compete for a CCC title, and I think we're still on that path of doing that right now. So it's been um, kind of awesome to watch the growth in our program. It has. Um, we, we play in the toughest conference in the country in my eyes. I mean, it doesn't get much better than your OIT Southern College of Idaho, EOU, you know what I mean? Like it's like it's a powerhouse conference. Um, what this year? We we start out the season. We're not ranked. Yeah, right? we are. Oh, we are. Twenty four. We're twenty four. Okay, yeah. so so that means we have four teams in the top twenty five to start the season in yeah. the CCC. Um, the season starts tomorrow on the road down in California against Shasta. Um, what's that looking like? Um, you know, I think we're in a better situation than we were last year due to weather. Um, for some reason, we've been able to get outside a little bit more this year um, before going down and facing William Jessup and Hope last year um, was tough not being outside. Um, you know, and those turned out to be really big games for us that I think in a way pulled some of our rankings toward Hope because we did lose to them. Um, and they've got the final vote last year for um, Nationals. So being outside these past few four days have been awesome. Um, just getting reps on turf. We've been down at community. We haven't been on our field yet. We've been on the football field. Um, you know, it's just nice to get out of the gym and not being at 5 a.m. So I'm excited for this yeah. weekend. We've got, we open up with Shasta, which is just the scrimmage. Um, so kind of getting those little things worked out against the team that's not us and seeing other pitchers. Um, and then we open up with Simpson and William Jessup, which... William Jessup will be to uh, Division Two next year. Um, they're always usually ranked in the top 25 or receiving votes. And Simpson's been in, you know, close to that ending where they, they have a shot at going to Nationals as well. So definitely good games this weekend. Um, it will be a great opener for us. So I'm excited. Yeah. Last year we we were right on the cusp of, of making the National Tournament. I, I mean, I of course, as a fan, I thought we should have got in. But uh, is that motivation for this year? Yes, for sure. I think um, sitting there and watching, you know, knowing teams that we um, competed with, you know, doing well, and then that we had an opportunity to beat Southern, and they ended up winning everything. Um, we competed with OIT multiple times um, in our four-game series. Um, C of I, we beat, you know, and just watching those teams being at the national level, being there, um, you know, it, it just kind of feels that fire a little bit more. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the returners first. Um, I mean, uh, we have arguably one of the best pitchers in the country coming back in Kaylee Hoskins. She broke the school record, the conference record for strikeouts last year. She's like only a hundred and some odd strikeouts away from breaking the career record at EOU. Um, talk about the returners a little bit and what they're going to mean to this team. I think this year's returners, stepping up-wise, I've seen a huge improvement in just leadership, um, overall drive, that grit. Um, you know, they got that taste of we should have been there last year, and so they don't want to see that happen. Um, between just my juniors and that senior class, even my underclassmen that were freshmen are stepping up in the leader, leadership roles. Um, you know, obviously Kaylee was huge on the mound for us as a lefty. Um, no one really could anticipate how well she would do. I mean, we had an idea coming in with, you know, battling her every day live and, and seeing what she did to our hitters. And then, you know, she continued that into conference. Um, and, you know, for us, we just felt that we need to go out and get support, um, more pitching um, to continue that, to not put all the pressure on the one person. And I think we did that in, in our recruiting um, you know, we've got the Tyree sisters that I think both have the opportunity to be first team all conference yeah. this year, if not all American. Uh, Maddie Statler was first team all conference at shortstop. You know, she's got four years now at, at short for us. 
Um, we've got Gates, uh, you know, True is coming off um, her surgery. She, hopefully she's cleared next week at third. She was really getting things going before she got injured. Um, we just got a lot of key pieces. Um, Addie was one of our top hitters as well. Um, you know, it, it's just exciting to see those girls come in and then the new group we got in, um, just kind of gelling with them way better than last year. The group gets along um, amazing. And so seeing those those groups working together, functioning as one is kind of awesome to see. Yeah. Okay, so if there was a weakness, the number one weakness for this team was anything after number one when it came to pitching. Um, you said you went out and got some recruits. Talk about that. Where, where are we at? Um, we went out and got uh, Kylie Parsons. She was Mount Hood's number one local backyard out of Pendleton. We've kind of watched her around, um, you know, as she left Pendleton, went to St. Martin's, transferred to Mount Hood. Um, man, she was our workhorse. And um, just watching her um, inning after inning, she was one of the top three ERAs, if not top two, I think. Um, for the NWACs, we got Mikao Jackson out of CBC. She was their workhorse on the mound. Um, she also hits, was one of their top hitters. Um, different type speed spins. Um, you know, we picked up velocity spin pitcher and then Northwest closed their doors. And so it was one of those things where, you know, our, our connection with Pam um, before they cut softball and she reached out, we picked up four of their players, um, both their pitchers, which Nat, um, she has 10 wins in CCC conference as a freshman. Um, and then Bella is a lefty junk ball pitcher, um, you know, and those two worked for Northwest and they were one game out one or two games out of the CCC. And then we picked up their first baseman. That was one of their best hitters that also had an ACL surgery and then lived their second baseman. So those four coming in were kind of just the late addition that we never even would have had on our radar. Mm -hmm. um, picking up those two pitchers, um, you know, and we have Katie Grunberg returning um, as a freshman, um, red shirt freshman. And so she's been working and putting the time in. And then we have Ebner. So we've got a roster for pitching staff. Um, all different deliveries, different speeds. We've got two in the high velocity, um, you know, and then you go with those other pitchers that are just different. And that's huge. But I feel like we're going to be able to compete a lot better with our pitching staff this year. Um, and then the hitters we brought in were another key thing that we left too many runners on. So we wanted to go out and get some um, some bats to help with that, to boost up that roster. It seems like, though, you looked at what was – wrong with last year or where we were lacking addressed it i mean uh, in my eyes you knew that we were short when it came to pitching and i don't want to say short i just think anything after kaylee there was such a dramatic you know space there so we, we you can't throw the same pitcher every single game every inning so there had to you know we had to close that gap a little yeah. bit and, I, and it seems like you did that for sure. And we had some girls step up at the end um, that got a lot more pitching time with Kaylee. Unfortunately, so, you know, some of them moved on. And so we knew like with our pitching staff and um, that was one of the things we had to address. And, um, you know, I, we still tease Kylie because she turned us down three times. And I was yeah. like, man, you know, like we're home, we're in your backyard. Like, what are you waiting for? But at the end of the day, it's also that kid that has to really want to be here, really commit to it. And, you know, it was a late sign for, um, excuse me, it was Kylie. Um, we have too many names alike, so I mix them up all the time. All right. Kylie, Kaylee. Kylie, yeah. Kaylee, you name yeah. it. Um, but, no, we were excited to pick up Kylie at the end. I think it was August when she actually decided. So it was a very late, late signing for us. But, yeah, just super excited to get in this conference, knowing that um, – a lot of these teams, Southern and College of Idaho, had to replace a ton of talent. And, you know, we reloaded at some of the key spots. Um, OIT is going to be tough. They lost one player and then one, yeah. then they recruited uh, one of the pitchers from Ben. You know, like her stats is unreal coming in as a freshman. And so, um, and I think Greg kind of knew too where he was at that he needed one more stud pitcher with those two throwing a ton of innings last year. Um, and so, gosh, our conference is just tough. It's exciting to watch. Um, we've already started scouting C of I. They're on the road. Carroll plays today. You know, we've got all those things out trying to scout them to, to know that it's going to be tough this year. No, let's not to kick a dead horse, <laughs> but do you think we got shorted last year when it comes to the national tournament? Um, I think in regards to our – 
schedule and who we saw day in and day out, um, that's what I think I thought we had a chance at to bypass Me hope. Too. Bypass hope just because of having the one, the two or eight or whatever they're ranked in the top 10 and playing, you know, those are 24 games of our 50 are against three teams in the top 10 in the yeah, nation. Yes. It's not like I get a, a 13 or 20. It is one through, you know, 10 that we're facing 24 of our games, yeah. um, you know, um, or excuse me, 12 of our games against those teams. And so a little bit, but I'll take it. You know, if they, I, I don't think anybody wants to see our pitching staff this year. No. Um, and they definitely didn't want to see it last year. And so that's kind of been our drive. Like I want our pitchers throwing as hard as they can against us for hitters, because I feel if we can, you know, make those adjustments on our pitchers, we're going to be doing okay once we see other pitchers that we're going to face. So you got all the players in a room. What do you What are you telling them this year? What's our, What's our goal? I want top ten. I want to be at the final site. Um, I want to, I mean, my goal was to always be where my team finished when I played at fourth. I would love a final three finish. Um, I want a CCC to where we don't, a, a title tournament. Um, we don't want to have to go on the road and go play at Southern or OIT anymore. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. like our goal is be like, okay, if May 1st, 2nd, when it's that CCC tournament, we want to host it in La Grande. We want to sleep in our beds. We want to be that team. And um, you know, and I think um, we're facing OIT right out the door. Right They're, off the hop. Right, right out the door. Um, here. Here, yep. on our field. Number one. Hopefully. Hopefully on, on our field. Number one team in the nation. Um, you know, and OIT has been very known for starting off hot. They've got hope, which we're excited to kind of scout that game and see how they face um, Allie, which is, I would say, very comparable pitcher to Kaylee. They had the same numbers dominant she's already thrown a no hitter you know like it's one of those things where you know um hope's going to be tough again with Allie on the mound as a senior but oit has them and so i'm excited to see what, how they handle hope when we struggled last year with them um but just i mean i'm, I'm excited our goal is to host ccc and be in the final 10 yeah. and i think anything less than that is going to be a little bit of a disappointment um, but I also know we've got to take care of business first before we can even look ahead to that point. Yeah, we got it. We have to win conference games. Yep. The the first three of a four game uh, stand are go towards the conference. Some people don't know that. You know, like when EOU plays a Friday, Saturday, or a Saturday, Sunday double header, double header. The only ones that count towards the conference standing are the first three games. Yes. That's that's weird. Why do they do that? Um, I think fourth game budget saves us money. Um, it's hard where we're at to pick up preseason. You know, everybody, I think, but um, probably us are in Arizona right now. We go to, you know, Reading to pick up games in Cali. Um, but it's financially, it makes sense to add that fourth. Um, you know, and when I first got here, obviously building a program, you're, you're here about getting innings and trying to get everybody playing time in that fourth game. Yeah. So well, it's, you know, it's a, and, chance. And, and, and a chance, but now talking with the, you know, Greg of OIT and Al of C of I and Jess at, at SOU, every game's a must win. And so philosophy has definitely changed to where now it's like, okay, we're playing four and that fourth game doesn't count, but it does. Yeah. Cause it, I mean, it counts towards your national. Right exactly. Now. And so right now with us being, ranked we've got to win every game that we possibly can there's right. no oh let's just get them you know a couple innings um we've got to put our best nine ten if we're dp'ing out there and all roll with four it. games all four games 100 percent um for for this season the 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 early games you know in the past few years we've had games that have to get moved to pendleton or hermiston or wherever um home games where are we going to ever have turf up there I mean, that's the goal. I think yeah. um, financially, it's it's about what's best for our university first and make sure everything's rolling that way. And then um, our goal is to put baseball right beside us and turf softball, turf the infield for baseball and, and move forward in that direction to, you know, just for recruiting purposes and, and field maintenance and, you know, saving money on product and all that stuff. And yeah. so... That's our goal. I think everybody's on the same page. Um, and so I'm excited when that happens. Hopefully I'm still here, you know, however long it takes. Right. Um, I, 
I, I want to see turf. I love turf. Most of our teams have gone to turf in our conference. Right. And so it's just kind of one of those things that fits in. Um, you know, there's only, I think, maybe two or two teams left that are dirt and the rest are turf. Is the uh, field down at Optimist in playing, is it ready? Like, would we be able to play home games there this year if we have to? Right now, it's we just got to do some work on the fence in regards to safety measures. Like, we've been down there practicing the past couple days. Um, the dugouts, they did a great job building the dugouts down there. Um, you know, we've had, we left our padding up for safety around the backstop because it's all concrete. Um, but yeah, it's ready to roll. Unlike last year where we had to put the carport tent up, you oh, know, yeah, for yeah, Bushnell. Yeah. Um, so weather permitting, we, um, the grass is firm, um, turf's ready to go down there. We've been down there the past couple of days practicing, um, so if, you know, it comes to it, we should be able to play there at least this year. Um, so we won't have to travel over the hill for home games. Yeah, that would be our ideal. As long as the bunch of snow is not on the grass, we should be able to play down at community. Nice. I like that. Good. Well, uh, good luck this weekend in California trip. I mean, it's a, it's, it's preseason, but it's still, like you said, every game counts, right? I mean, it's. Yep. For sure, and that's what we've kind of talked about going into this week. I think last year with so many new athletes coming into the program, understanding that these are, it's go time, it is business trip. It's not a, oh, let's go to Cali and have fun trip. Yeah. Here on out, it's business. You guys have been working hard for three weeks, 5 a.m. conditioning, you know, doing those things. But now it's time for business, and, and we're heading down there with that mindset, like let's go 4-0 and and come back and um, you know have a little bit of time off before we get ready to go face Central Washington. Yeah. So it's definitely business from here on out. Love it. Eastern Oregon, she's EOU head softball coach, Nicole Christian. I'm Dodzie. Coach Christian, I appreciate you. Thanks, Kyle.